Lewis Hamilton will make a stunning switch to Ferrari for 2025 in one of F1's biggest driver moves ever. Hamilton only signed a new two-year Mercedes deal last summer that was meant to cover 2024 and 2025, which is one of many reasons this is such a big surprise. But it turns out that new contract includes a release clause for 2025 that Hamilton has chosen to activate before even driving the 2024 Mercedes in reality. We didn't see this coming, and Mercedes didn't either, based on the hurried meeting that was held at Brackley on Thursday afternoon to inform staff, a meeting that team boss Toto Wolff wasn't able to be present for and dialed into. This really came out of left field, because OK, it's been rumoured multiple times, most recently in early 2023, but Hamilton's Mercedes renewal and all his comments around the team genuinely seem to put that prospect to bed. Now it's official, Hamilton will swap Mercedes for Ferrari in 2025, and we've got a pretty good idea of the motivations why, which we'll come to very shortly. First, it's worth letting it sink in just how big a deal this is. It's probably F1's biggest move since Hamilton's last, when he ditched long-time backer McLaren for Mercedes for 2013. It edges out Fernando Alonso's shock McLaren return and Sebastian Vettel's own switch to Ferrari from Red Bull. That's a marker of Hamilton's standing, given he is F1's most successful driver ever, and the strength of the Hamilton Mercedes Union, which looked like it would eventually transcend F1 into a lifetime ambassadorial relationship. Remember, Mercedes was in Hamilton's corner alongside McLaren, and Hamilton considers himself to have been with Mercedes back to his karting days, so this is a massive breakup. But it's also huge for what it sets up. Hamilton's in the twilight of his career, but even in Mercedes' difficult last two seasons, he's been able to show flashes of his brilliant best. Now he moves into Charles Leclerc's house, Leclerc being arguably the fastest driver in F1 over a single lap. It's a proper powerhouse of a teammate combination and probably becomes the best in F1, given Leclerc's qualifying prowess and the fact he's proven himself as a multiple race winner. It will give Leclerc a stunning benchmark, but also undoubtedly be a good test for Hamilton too, to see whether he's still operating at the peak of his powers. After all, he's admitted to self-doubt over the past couple of years and George Russell has pushed him quite hard at Mercedes. Leclerc's super fast, but also properly ingrained within the Ferrari system, and can be expected to be at 100% performance from the start in 2025. That makes it an incredibly bold call from Hamilton, the kind of show of self-confidence that really should be lauded. It's also selfish and ruthless, given he has made this decision before what will ultimately be his final season for Mercedes has even begun. It means Hamilton is stripping away the emotion and doing what's best for him, which is all you can expect from any elite sports person. And you could easily flip the argument about how early he's made this call and say he's done right by Mercedes by deciding this now and giving it lots of time to work out a succession plan. Hamilton's motivation remains sky high. He wants to win in F1 again, which is why he's doing what he always thought he wouldn't, racing into his 40s. Hamilton hasn't won since the end of 2021 and has a big desire to change that before he finally retires. The stunning thing here is that he's decided that Ferrari, not Mercedes, is the place to try to do that. There will be push and pull factors behind this and the competitive prospects of both teams are obviously relevant. The push from Mercedes would be that Hamilton doesn't believe his current team is a good enough bet anymore to give him the chance to achieve what he wants to on track. We'll dig into this in a bit more detail shortly. As for Ferrari, Hamilton has met the company chairman John Elkin on social occasions multiple times in recent years and it's possible that Hamilton's existing relationship with Ferrari team boss Fred Vasseur, who Hamilton raced for back in F3 and GP2, played a role in convincing him too. But the main pull from Ferrari would be that something about its offer is convincing Hamilton it is a better bet than Mercedes, not necessarily for 2025 but beyond that with the new car and engine rules in 2026. Remember that Hamilton is one for one for making a surprise but super successful switch ahead of a brand new set of regulations, as his Mercedes move was part of setting up for the new era that started in 2014, and that worked out pretty well. Hamilton will obviously be hoping for a repeat of that, but to be honest, he doesn't need to bank on Ferrari being a clearly superior choice to Mercedes. In a way, it just has to not be a worse one. It's entirely possible that assuming Hamilton has lost faith in Mercedes, he doesn't need Ferrari to guarantee the success that Mercedes can't, because Ferrari can still offer him something else, a stunning career epilogue. Hamilton at Ferrari is a brilliant combination, and it's the only move he has ever considered making from Mercedes. Driving for Ferrari has been an idea in his mind for a long time, it just always looked like something that would never make enough sense. Now it seems it does, and while ticking off a fun career bucket list item will surely not be the whole motivation, as Hamilton will surely believe he can achieve something on track too, it's a great sweetener that no other Mercedes alternative can offer. 
Hamilton signing for Ferrari without even having driven the 2024 Mercedes in the real world or seen how the season starts in terms of performance is a devastating vote of no confidence in his current team. Losing Hamilton to what would have been a well-earned retirement is one thing, but to a major rival that's in broadly the same position as you in competitive terms is another. Regardless of the allure of Ferrari, Hamilton's negative view of the potential of Mercedes must have played a part in his decision. There can't be any kind of performance element to the contract he signed with Mercedes giving him an early out given the 2024 season hasn't even started yet, so the big question is what's changed. As Mercedes technical director James Allison said in January, winning is a core part of Lewis Hamilton's psyche. History tells us that Hamilton has always focused on ensuring he's in the best possible place to win. Any desire to race for Ferrari because it's Ferrari won't have changed since he agreed that new Mercedes deal last year. Therefore, it's fair to conclude a factor in his decision is lack of confidence in Mercedes. Either that or he's had some fundamental falling out with the management. This leaves Mercedes without the driver who has been the linchpin of its success and having to find a replacement. It also faces a season of racing with Hamilton knowing he's off to Ferrari. This will have serious repercussions internally given the loss of Hamilton will be keenly felt and in terms of the team's commercial agreements. Hamilton is a megastar and losing him is a huge blow both on and off track. But most of all, what does it say about the hopes of Mercedes re-emerging as a Red Bull challenger in 2024 and 2025? The inescapable conclusion is that Hamilton thinks its prospects are bad. Mercedes may well have a contingency plan already, but the short answer to who can replace Hamilton is not many drivers, if any. You're not going to single-handedly replace what Hamilton's given Mercedes. You can't even really recreate him in the aggregate. But if Mercedes believes that Russell is capable of being the team's North Star long term, then that's a great place to start. Russell had a weak 2023 by his own admission, but the pace was still strong, and in 2022 he showed how much Mercedes can rely on him. Assuming he raises his game this year and can thrive as the clear team leader in Hamilton's absence, then it's about slotting in the most appropriate teammate. Mercedes has shown itself open to having two alpha drivers, but several of the very best are under contract, like Lando Norris at McLaren, and Mercedes is probably going to be shopping among the free agents. So could a move for Fernando Alonso be ruled out? He is almost certainly the most competitive prospect who could be available for 2025, and would be the closest thing to a like-for-like -like alternative to Hamilton given his experience, determination and ability. He's also the only option who could be considered a plug-in and play championship challenger should the 2025 Mercedes be good enough. But he could also be divisive and is only a short-term option given his age. So what about finding Russell's version of Valtteri Bottas, aka a great wingman who would aid Team Harmony? Assuming that bringing back Bottas himself is out of the question, given there are genuinely better options on the table, then the man Hamilton is replacing at Ferrari, Carlos Sainz, would be a great contender for this. But so too would Russell's longtime friend Alex Albon, who is looking for a step up from Williams and has proved himself ready for a bigger opportunity again after rebuilding his reputation post Red Bull. It's worth considering Mercedes managed Esteban Ocon here. He could be a good support act, only he has a reputation for clashing way too much with his teammates. And Mercedes was happy finding him a seat somewhere else when Ocon was effectively usurped by Russell as Hamilton's heir apparent and seen more in the Bottas mold than a number one driver. If Mercedes wanted to be really bold and set itself up longer term, then an immediate promotion for Formula 2 rookie Andrea Kimi Antonelli would be the left field exciting choice. Antonelli is only 17 years old and the F2 step he's making this year is already huge, but if he excels, maybe a Hamilton McLaren 2007 graduation could be on the cards. It would certainly inject some excitement and positivity into Mercedes to know that one outgoing megastar is being replaced by a modern prodigy. Another driver in the Mercedes fold is reserve Mick Schumacher who has been talked up by Mercedes boss Toto Wolff previously, but he's not someone we think has a realistic shot of getting back on the grid at a less competitive team, let alone Mercedes. That seems about as likely as Mercedes calling on its last non-Hamilton champion, the 38-year-old and retired since winning that title in 2016, Nico Rosberg. Hamilton's Ferrari move explains why Leclerc's current teammate Carlos Sainz has never got the contract extension we all expected for so long. Losing Sainz is a negative given how complementary his skill set was alongside Leclerc. However, when you're replacing him with Hamilton, that's no real loss. It creates an interesting question about Ferrari's strategy. Hamilton is still operating at a sky-high level, but there's a good chance he'll only be a Ferrari driver for a few seasons. That could be great news for Oli Behrman, who could well end up in a Haas next year, then be ready to step up as Hamilton's successor. As for Sainz, the question is, where does he go? He should be in the conversation at Mercedes, as we've mentioned, and Aston Martin, and perhaps even Red Bull. 
but unless those possibilities arise, the most likely destination appears to be to commit to the potentially bright future of the Sauber Audi project. It would give him the job security he wants and a realistic chance of success. It would also be a long game, but more appealing than, say, a move back to Alpine or a switch to Williams. What serious options emerge for Sainz and also Mercedes are now part of an even more fascinating driver market landscape that was already looking like fun for 2025 and has just been cranked up a notch by Hamilton's massive move.